All right, we are back in the Detroit is Different podcast studios, and I have two special guests uh, coming to the network. These are creatives. One uses different forms. I'm going to say a paintbrush, also a camera, also, a, what would we say? Jewelry as well. And poetry. And poetry. And God knows what other medium she's going to get into as she grows older. And she brought one of her friends that I'm just now meeting to anchor a podcast in creativity and artistry. And this one uses photography, graphic design, a lot of the Adobe suite, and so much more and more. Asia and Aaron from the Unicorns Are Real podcast that will be coming up. How are you all today? Doing well. Trying to recover from yesterday. Oh, yeah. I'm well. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well. Both from an art showing yesterday, both uh, in the creative space, hanging around creative people, and being young and full of life and zeal, enthusiasm, <laughs> enjoyment, and so much more. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the creative story uh, of both of you all. But before we get to that, how did you guys meet? Well, when I went to Lawrence Technological University, I was friends with her best friend, Marissa, Marissa, and from Marissa, she invited me to hang out with her friends, and then I met Aaron, mm -hmm. and from then, what was that, like 2013, 2014? Yeah. Yep, so, and, you know, we would talk here and there, and then some time would go by, and we'd talk here and there, but then lately, we've been hanging out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Because I've been doing a lot more <laughs> around Detroit. <laughs> yeah. As I'm, I'm more of the, the, no, I wouldn't say party hopper, but, you know, function goer. So, function goer. Yeah. You turning up. You that age to turn up. <laughs> you that no, age to turn no, up. No, I already did that. You know, less, less. You turn it down now. Turn it down. Like, I'm at, I'm at the, the functions, but not, not that person that's all, that, you know, that's turned up. You're not completely. like, hey, where the shots at? Yeah, I'm not completely that person anymore. But if you want to hand me one, one or two, you know, four at max. <laughs> Five or six. No, nah, no, no. Nah. Seven or eight. She'll tap to, out at four. <laughs> no, I'm going to tap out at four. I just need to, I want to be in a place where I don't have to drive. I got you. That's yeah. smart. See, yeah. see, turn it up responsible. I'm going to enter into that adulthood where you have to start being responsible. <laughs> I know, I know. You got a job that you got to wake up to yeah, go to. Yeah, like I can't, like if my job find out, I got a, uh, I got a DUI, I'm getting fired. See, that's what I'm talking about. Adulthood. <laughs> yeah. Adulthood. That's what I'm talking about. Aaron, what do you remember about me, Nation? <laughs> um, okay, so I don't remember when we exactly met but i remember like i had a photo shoot and i invited her friend mark mm -hmm. to model for me okay and then he brought more people than i was expecting inside the studio okay. because so it was mark mark is of, of urban culture that's yes. what we call it <laughs> <laughs> urban, of urban culture and then i was already overwhelmed because i was like so they're gonna be sitting around while i'm setting up for a shoot <laughs> And then she just like fall asleep on the studio floor <laughs> while I'm shooting. Asia is laying on her belt bag, just knocked out. Yeah, Complete on the floor. <laughs> on and the I floor. was like, this is wild. <laughs> I'm trying to shoot. <laughs> She's sleeping. I was like, it's cute because I took a picture of her. And then, I, okay, that was like one yeah. of the moments that yeah. I remember most. And I was like, She's sleeping. Uh -huh. During my whole shoot, yeah, like that, like <laughs> straight up artist style, like no no regard for social norms of like <laughs> let me let none me at actually, all. Uh, <laughs> let me sit in the best corner. Nope. Of nope. this whole thing, nope. she's like let me right make myself middle. at home because art is happening. Yes, and <laughs> as much as art is happening, rest is yes. needed. Because nine times out of ten, the night before, that's that was my true turn up years. Yes. My, turn up <laughs> my years. true turn up years. <laughs> like this is when I had like no shits were given. Yes, <laughs> I didn't care. Mm -hmm. You know, I still hold my own though. Coming run deep in my blood. Like yeah. a lot of my family members, they they can hold their own. So I can hold my own, even though I'm small. But okay. it's unexpected. Okay, but now <laughs> from there, just artistry when did you guys just talk shop and find out that both of you all are very passionate about creating i think i was in her dorm room and i saw all the paintings that she was starting i think the first painting i saw was the erica badu painting that she did 
when oh, me the and first Marissa, one. Yeah, the, the first, first one. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not the last one, the first one. The first, okay. the cool. very first, okay. Erica Badu. And I was like, that's so cool. Because I was like, she's going to Lawrence. And I'm like, why didn't you come to CZ? Like me trying to get people to go trying to, to recruit. college for creative <laughs> studies with me. Uh-huh. And I'm like, why didn't you come here? It's, and I'm up here trying to like ease her into like being in a world full of creatives just every day. Because I was like, why are you going here? This mm-hmm. is it. This doesn't seem like a creative environment. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and I think she was going, were you going for architecture as well? Yeah, I was going for architecture, um, but I I learned very, very quickly that architecture is more with the computers now. Now, granted, at Lawrence Tech, they do, they do, like, have you start off using pencils and markers and colored pencils and pastels and all that, all that fun stuff, but after that, after that first year, it's strictly the computer. They don't want to hear nothing artistic at all. Okay. Now, as we talk about nothing artistic, let's talk about artistic journeys. Um, when you all were young, like as kids, when when did it come that, like, I want to express creatively? And let's go Aaron first, because you're in the photography, you're in the graphic design, you're in the mediums that expand beyond the crayons given to said child. Yeah. I so mean, like, also draw and when too. did when did it come that it was like okay, I like this. Like, when did you embrace creativity? Um, or what do you remember most? Okay, when I was a kid, it wasn't more. I was like more into like performing arts okay. as a child. Like, uh, like <laughs> what? Explain. Like, okay, so my family, I, I'm so grateful for their patience. <laughs> Me, I used to make them sit through like talent shows that I put together because I wanted to sing. Yes, I wanted to sing, and I would be like, "You'd be like, (laughs) hey, everybody, sit in the dining room," and then you come from the kitchen and be like, "Yes, that's exactly what would happen." (laughs) I'll sit them in the living room, and I'll have my music playing, and then come out the kitchen and then perform for them because singing was like what I wanted to do. Were you were you good, or were they just patronizing you? Like, yeah, I, I don't. My mom would say I could hold a note. Okay, that's that's dissing for a mom. Your mom was throwing salt on the game. Yeah. But she may have been keeping it real. But, you know, she'd be like, hold a note. Yeah, because she, you know. Being like the churchgoers. Yeah, yeah, she (laughs) encouraged me to be Uh in, like, the choir. Uh But, you know, it wasn't anything. Get that back row. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and then I would start, and then when I got into acting, I would do, like, acting plays or like okay. I'll make them watch the little videos I did with my stuffed animals where I did wow. the multiple voices and I recorded on a recorder what? and then played wait out. wait you gotta talk a little bit what this is so funny because me and my sister used to do stuff like this too <laughs> it's like just the creativity of kids is like so <laughs> so interesting like when I had toys I create like whole universes yeah because like they say Marvel universe it's like yeah it's like hey my mom's cleaning up in the dining room so it's like okay the universe has to go to the living room mm-hmm. but uh, what were some of these plays do you remember any things or characters names or like the plot or are you too embarrassed to share <laughs> I'm trying to think uh no because I don't I don't think I remember those animals names because I it was always interesting because I would sit them up and then I would set up our little camera, mm-hmm. little camera cord. <laughs> and then, like, I don't know. I don't think they had, like, names. I will just make sure I switched up the voice for each animal. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> so you didn't name all your stuffed animals and stuff? I mean, I did. Like, because I still got stuffed animals. Oh, like, I still got stuffed animals. When you say name. name them, like, so my stuffed animals that I have, they already have character names so oh. <laughs> so you just you, you she just so left you the like factory died. yeah like <laughs> i have an, i have so angelica like winnie the pooh yeah angelica yeah. Uh-huh. i had the yellow teletubby and then i had scooby-doo okay so you never got like bootleg uh stuffed animals like when nah. it's just dog no nah. nah. <laughs> okay. oh wait I had pupster was one of the names <laughs> Uh, Very creative because like <laughs> i always wanted a husky my mom never got me a husky and i guess their substitute was a husky stuffed animal and okay. I was like, this it's not sufficient. Um, <laughs> but his name was Pupster, and I remember that. And I still have Pupster. It's just in a closet, baby, buried under a couple boxes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, 
And then oh, like yeah. these these so this was like uh like Gumby animation or something like like puppet like puppet shows. That's what it yes, was. Yes. Almost so more so like the Muppets. <laughs> yes. I guess I nice. Say. Yes. In a but, way. Like your hands were in it. Were you in the shot like No, my hands wouldn't be in it. I would legit like just do like I'll pose them mm-hmm. in the frame and then like get out of it and then like turn the camera. <laughs> so it was like stop motion. Yeah, like, stop almost. Stop motion yeah. animation. <laughs> but you were a child. You didn't know what you were doing. No. How old you, were you? I would I, like I was I was young. I don't know what it's okay. It was whenever like ten ish. I would say ten ish. Mm-hmm. She's it's been in the game this, forever. And I was probably old doing that. Like, okay. 10 seems pretty old. So, <laughs> no, I was still <laughs> playing with... Yeah. <laughs> Brad dolls were still a thing in my house until so I was 13. Oh, my so. God. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't even want to talk so about funny. what I did with dolls. <laughs> it's so funny. If you talk about brats, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was one of the funniest things. One of my... <laughs> we were doing a... Uh, we were doing a, a... A Halloween fashion show. <laughs> and one of the girls came as brats, right? <laughs> and my friend was like, "Little girl came as Nicki Minaj." <laughs> and it was like, "Oh, brats!" <laughs> it was one of the funniest. Shout out my man Khan holding down Vegas. Oh, uh, so many stories. But like the the creativity there. Like, did your parents like were they just continuing to encourage like? Did they look at it like, our daughter is a little off? Or did they look at it like, this one, is this is a special kid? Well, it it was like, these performances would be for my mom. Because my dad, I felt like, one, he didn't live with us. Mm -hmm. So I felt like he kind of, he didn't really care for my creativity Mm -hmm. as much. My mom was more supportive of it. Um, Your dad was like a man's man. Like, we're going to turn for that. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even. In the, I don't think I even attempted like beyond like mm-hmm. when I had acting classes in high school would like even like do anything entertaining to him. Okay. I just go to his house and be there with him and his wife and just be like, mm-hmm. "Well, I'm here for the weekend, mm. and then I'll go home." <laughs> so mom, that's where moms are cool. Moms yeah. always look out. Moms are so, so supportive of of a child's ambitions. Yeah. It's like they go through a whole day of life. And then it's like, Ma, hold on, let me let me let me play this play for you. And you'd be like, yo, for real? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think and then like <laughs> Yep. She would just sit there. She would honestly just sit there and take it. And I Yeah. That's so dope. I'm trying to That's think. so dope. <laughs> now now did you like continue to expand on these ideas and like know you were doing something or was it just having fun? I think it was just having fun. And but I always knew that I wanted to do something artistic. Like going through like middle school, I would be like, I also like wrote little short stories in middle school. Or like pretend I'm writing a book, and then hand out like the stories to the kids wow. and have them pass around the story I just wrote. I read those. They were ha- like pretty decent plot lines. Grammatically terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like pretty decent. Like, like like give me give me some of that. Okay. Plot. I think. I came up with this one in like the sixth or seventh grade, and it was called Blind Date. Okay. <laughs> no, I've never been on a date because I'm in sixth grade. But mm-hmm. like the girl in the story, I guess her friends set her up on like a blind date or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they, I don't, they were like, they became like really close friends. I don't even know what happened in that story. But another one I came up with in like the eighth grade. It was called Faces, and it was about this girl named Valentina. Mm -hmm. And each chapter was told from a different perspective because, like, it was, like, one of those, like, it was kind of like a murder mystery book Mm, (laughs) or a murder mystery plot line because one of her friends got killed. But it was, like, it was, um, what was that? It was stage like a suicide <laughs> and each chapter would be from a different person or how that like person a Tarantino film yeah and it was like I was like oh this is really good and I've been trying to like rewrite that one or rework it mm-hmm. to make more sense because I was like this is actually pretty good like Valentina's boyfriend I guess <laughs> was like the cause of her friend dying <laughs> mm. or the killer mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And then I was like, this was actually really good. But I had my friends like read that. I don't even know why I made this, the character Spanish. Maybe because I grew up in Southwest Detroit. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know why. Because <laughs> every character, I was like, I don't know why I'm trying to speak from a Latin person's perspective. Because I have no clue to their life <laughs> and how they function. I was like, if I did rework the stories, they would have to be black. Okay. Because <laughs> I have no clue. So it would be like <laughs> Tanisha. Or, I, I kind of reworked names. London is the main character's okay. name. And she has a twin brother named Lyndon. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to figure it Very out. Very creative. Man. Yeah. Very so, creative. So, with this, performing arts carries on. Um, acting, I'm guessing? That's I what did, it was? I did What did you do in, as an actress? Um, I had well, acting classes in high school. I did a lot of improv things Mm -hmm. um (laughs) did you do any uh like high school plays or musicals and stuff like that no okay i just left it it as i'm not getting in front of an actual crowd i was was it stage fright what what i have i have a stream stage fright so it'd Mm. be like and it's so bad because i would be committed and i don't know all the lines and i can memorize the lines and i can do great in class but it was just like anytime i was on the stage just full tremble <laughs> shaking of full nervousness and i do that now like when i'm presenting because i do advertising mm-hmm. and it's still like really yeah. bad public, public speaking public speaking as they say that's that is, is the biggest fear of people <laughs> and i don't know why because i was like i would do really good <laughs> and then mm-hmm. it's just like and then you clam up like ah ah i want to say something but i can't yeah did, did, did something happen that was like really embarrassing to you or one of your friends when you were a kid and it just but came I, out of your mind see i don't even know because mm-hmm. they like i like the videos i've seen of mm-hmm. myself like doing like church easter speeches mm-hmm. i was like she was fearless what happened mm-hmm. i don't know what happened because i also used to just as a child get in front of the dance of the church and dance okay <laughs> just like you know, like children breaking out of the few and just dancing. Okay. But I don't know what happened because now I just get super nervous. Mm. I get like nervous giggles mm. and I giggle a lot. I giggle okay. a lot. And they, they're not going to take that seriously in a business professional setting. No, they don't. Mm-mm, not but at they, all. but, but sometimes it wins because they'd be like, you have a really nice smile mm. and you seem relatable. Mm. And you're not even smiling, you're laughing. That's what a lot of times people, people think I'm smiling, but I'm laughing at some. I, I, it's no telling. I'm laughing at stuff from years ago. Like I'm gonna call my friend and we're gonna talk about that whole Nicki Minaj thing tomorrow. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna be like a Bratz Bow reference. Speaking of a Bratz Bow reference, Asia, you yes. creativity as a child. What was that like? Oh, there was none there. It was. What do you it's, mean? I look at it as if like um, so. Growing up, since my mom was so young, we lived with my grandparents, with my grandmother for a while, and um, my aunts and uncles, they were close to my age. Like, my my youngest uncle, he's only five years, five years older than me. Mm-hmm. So, we would always play and interact, but he's really, like, an extremely talented artist, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and I would try mm-hmm. and imitate everything that he did, but I was trash. Well, comparable to you had five years younger. But I was still trash. Well, so. you realize if, you, if, you're, <laughs> yeah. if you're eight and he's 13, he's yeah. probably like Michelangelo. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand this. Okay. But um, so since I be, I'm a, lar- a tall person, mm-hmm. um, I was pressured to like do sports. Okay. So, um, like, you can play basketball. Yeah. So <laughs> when I was in third grade, I was walking in the mall and then my basketball coach, my long-term basketball coach, approached me and asked me if I wanted to be on his basketball team. I had no skills or anything. Mm-hmm. So within a year, I was playing basketball full-time. Mm-hmm. The next year, I did travel basketball, so I had no time for any of that. And from there on, all did the you, way... Did you get good at basketball? Yeah. From then, all the way up until the ninth grade, um, I was playing basketball year-round. Did you like it? Um, I liked it. I, I feel now, I feel like I liked it because other people liked, my family members liked that I was doing it. So it was one of those things where 
you your appreciation for it was more so the response of other people. Yeah, because I had no confidence in myself. I had none. It's kind of like, like when I played basketball. N- I none did it at for all. My dad. <laughs> yeah, like none at all. I was a. I still love sports, and I always will. So when I got to ninth grade, um, I finally told them I don't like this. Mm-hmm. And I was on a very, like, catty team. Like, girls, they didn't like me. I didn't like them. And then to a point where, like... like basketball. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Like, when she went to oh, college. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, she just didn't get along. Like, and these girls, I grew up with these girls. So, like, mm-hmm. I had been playing basketball with them for years. Yeah. And, um, like, I just never got along with them. And then it got to the point where I didn't want to play. And then it, it showed when I was playing because... I didn't want to be there, so like, you I would just the in. no. I had no effort. Like I just had no. I fell out of love with playing basketball. Hmm. So that, on it because basketball is my favorite sport and yeah. right now because I'm definitely not watching the NFL. I'm watching more NBA. Yeah. Who's your favorite player coming up? You know, I've been a really big Kawhi Leonard fan, and I am like so hurt of like how this whole San Antonio thing went down Mm -hmm. because I've always loved the Spurs I've always thought they were like one of the best organizations ever Mm -hmm. you know they they teach the fundamentals they still play defense they're a squad like and then they produce a lot of good players like you know they don't get they obviously had like one of the best big threes ever Mm -hmm. but those big threes have fundamental skills that they've acquired over a time being under their wing, the San Antonio wing. Okay. And I've always appreciated that. So to see Kawhi Leonard leave for the, for the reasons that he's saying, and then the whole team to like have that big riff, it was, I was so hurt by it. Cause I just love that, that team. I love, that squad and I was really upset like when Kawhi Leonard got hurt because I had they, in my heart I thought that they were going to beat Golden State Warriors you was really tripping yes I was tripping. I was like I was so upset when he got hurt mm, mm, but anyways mm. so okay. fast forward when I stopped playing basketball I got to ninth grade now I also had like I have really bad knees and hips anybody that knows me knows that I'm always injured like I keep a I keep a pair of crutches in my car wow. just in case I'm not able to walk. Mm-hmm. Do you um, think that this was uh, like an impact from playing all that basketball at such an early age? I do, but a large part of it um, was how fast I've grown. Um, I grew like six inches within a summer. Hmm. So like when you grow that fast, the muscles and everything around the joints cannot, mm-hmm. they can't support they can't support what's going on. So Mm -hmm. like my knees have come out of place multiple times. My hip came out of place multiple times. So I've had those issues, but I- And this was at an early age. At an early age. So at an early age, you may have been in the hospital a lot for this. And what's that? I I broke my leg when I was was in the 10th grade at 15. It Uh was interesting, like just the whole process. What was that like in, that was in 10th grade. So I'm a little bit older, but I can't imagine what it's like to even be younger and going through being in the hospital, mm-hmm. that whole process, the timing. I mean, hospitals, just for anybody, you know, when you go through. Yeah, and especially, like, sleeping in a hospital bed is a mental, the, the mental strength it takes. It just takes a lot. Just, it's something about being in a hospital bed and you're sleeping there. Because you're not at home in your own comfort. Yeah. But even... But before I stopped playing basketball, um, ninth grade, um, I tried another sport, and I was really good at it. I was good at because when I played basketball, I was the only one that never really got tired. Hmm. So I would run. and mm-hmm. But running on a track is different running from running on a court. It's not as bad on your heart yeah. and your knees because you got a, a comfort from that cushion mm-hmm. of that track. So I was running track for two years, um, dislocated my kneecap, and wow. I was done. Mm had all these like it's weird because i had all these plans based around track like i was gonna i was looking at okay which college did i want to go to for running track because that's how serious i was about running track and once i had to stop completely running track it was like one of the most depressing things because that's sports were my life all up and all the way up until then Mm -hmm. you know i liked art um in the sixth grade i realized oh this is something that i like but it's not you something... You never put the devotion into it because you were on the court. I was always playing basketball. I was running. 
all these other things that were just, you know, more important. So once I was, once my physical therapist told me you cannot run anymore, that, okay, I'm going to put all my efforts into art. I started taking more art classes. I did, um, I did like the art group they had after school. Mm-hmm. I did uh, independent study at my school because after so many art classes, my teacher told me that I was beyond what she could give me in those those other classes because art in where I lived, there was like no one cared. Mm-hmm. We had one art teacher underfunded like just trash Mm -hmm. (laughs) so she said okay well we can do independent study i can give you some different things to do you you can you can develop your own projects and then i'll and then i'll grade them upon the principles and elements of design and that's what we did um i also got involved in the theater but i like designing sets so I designed sets for a while, and then I ran the lighting of the show. Hmm. Um, and then once, like, going, growing up, like, well, developing my own art in high school, I had no idea what I was going to do. Now, now let's, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that, being an athlete and having that intentionality of an athlete and that mm-hmm. work ethic. It seems as though you applied a lot of that into approaching art as well. Uh Um, So sometimes in sports, it can become very, very very technical, Uh very competitive, but just the process. You know, it's like I'm I'm getting my jumper. Mm -hmm. Like I was just playing a pickup game Mm -hmm. the other day with like some kids and they were Mm -hmm. like, man, how did you do that? It's so weird. Like people don't even like have mid range shots, but I was taking them because I'm old. But but um, you can get very technical yeah. without with the lack of like just the true appreciation for it. So were you honoring the your own appreciation for it every step of the way? Or was it like, let me master this the way I mastered running, the mm-hmm. way I was mastering basketball? Like, how are you still putting that balance of like, oh, this is something that I just appreciate as well? That's an interesting question, because when I first started doing art, It was more so of the technicality things that I was worried Mm -hmm. about. I had no, I had no like creative, creative outlook Mm -hmm. on how to do things. I was just like, okay, well, let me look at this picture and turn it into something Mm -hmm. I can create. Mm -hmm. Let me look at this picture and put it on a piece of paper. Very much like I have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to look like something and Mm -hmm. I wanted somebody to be able to recognize. I didn't want to do anything creative. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't have any type of creative bone in me um and it just wasn't something that I don't know if it's more so because I didn't I didn't like not saying that you had a creative household because I mean a lot of people don't I didn't have anyone to have these type of conversations with because it was just basically myself and the whole school yeah that was doing this independent study thing so and the teacher she couldn't really help me be more creative mm-hmm. i mean she would like okay well why don't you why don't you try and think of a concept but i struggled like mm-hmm. completely it wasn't until i did like some independent uh i mean i took some classes in chicago when i was in school when i was still in high school and i started learning um how to draw the figure i had a completely different outlook uh art and how to create art because we were just using charcoal and mm-hmm. some cheap paper mm-hmm. but drawing looking at figures so after that i looked at the world as shadows and highlights mm. <laughs> the, every every time i look at somebody i always just look at shadows and highlights mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like I, I don't look at them i look at them as forms not mm-hmm. as human beings like wow. as something that is an artistic form that can be created in yeah. in a different way so so when you talk about the this appreciation and it growing, uh-huh. you also have fanfare from an early age of being an athlete. Like, were the people around you starting to embrace what you were doing artistically? And how did you take that fanfare as people started embracing you creative? You know, it was weird because the, the one thing that I think about now is when you say that... Uh, 
one of one of the girls that um, I played basketball with when I was really young, all up until now, I still talk to her. She's cool, you know. I didn't have a problem with her, but her mm-hmm. parents. I've known her parents forever, and he was talking to me, and he was like, "Wow, I look at your art now, and it is amazing." Because when you were an athlete, you sucked, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow!" I like think about it. What like, my guy? Like, why would you say something like that to me? And at the time, I was I was in high school. You know, you put a damper on my little my little ego, or whatever. You know, I thought I was hot stuff because yeah. there was nobody else in the school that liked art. But um, but now that I think about it, he was just saying, "Well, now that you actually put." all your efforts into something that you truly you have like a creative vision with it yeah as well. yeah like so i mean to me it's it's, it's more of a it's more of a um a compliment now but back then i was like geez he just he just cut into me so hard for no reason um but yeah i think more people were shocked hmm. they didn't really know that because i I had never expressed to people that I liked art. I mean, they might have, because no one really paid attention to the little art booth that they had in the in the school, because they would have like a little showcase of other people's artwork. Mm-hmm. No one really paid attention to it, okay. and no one really knew that my stuff was in there all the time. <laughs> now, now on the flip side, Aaron, you being a creative most of your life, yeah, um, and and embracing this as you grow older. Um, Visually, uh, we definitely know theatrically. <laughs> so, uh, so as you grow older and more people tie into what you do, and they appreciate it, what was that feeling like for you? Um, well, they kind of. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I don't think it felt any different, like because like when I was younger and I was drawing, I would always show it and make sure everybody got, okay. I got everybody's approval. Okay, let's even talk, let's yeah. talk about that though. But even that, at a yeah. young age, getting everybody's opinion. And as people's opinions started going from, oh, I kind of like it, to like, yo, I really like that. To like, hey, can, uh, can I take this and put it up? Like, mm-hmm. how was that, feel? like, what was that feeling when you received some outside validation for your artistry? As I believe that Validation and the reason I'm I'm sticking to this question mm-hmm. is one of the toughest things that most artists always uh, struggle with, mm-hmm. and this is all forms of artistry. Yeah, musicians feel as though they want to be heard by the right audience. Actors want the right stage. Visual artists feel as though they're not appreciated by the best artists. Uh, I mean, audiences or galleries mm-hmm. and like that appreciation and validation means a lot to artists yeah. so i'm wondering like if you got it at an early age what was that feeling when you got it? my feeling was more so like okay this is clearly what i need to be focusing on or what i need to do so because, you felt as though this yes. was uh, as drake would say god's plan yes this is oh my god's god. plan this is my sole purpose is to be a creative mm-hmm. on this earth mm-hmm. Because I was like, well, they like my stuff. That means I need to do something in this field. Because, like, I mean, can I... I think I I was always, like, searching for, like, people to appreciate my stuff. And Mm -hmm. maybe that's why I kind of went into advertising. (laughs) Because you kind of... You get a little bit of appreciation when you create something from, like, the client Mm -hmm. liking Mm -hmm. what you created. Or, like, people instantly seeing your idea come into fruition. Mm -hmm. But it was like... Yeah, I don't know. I feel really great. And then it was like, I know this is my purpose. So your drive over (laughs) to advertising went through CCS, College for Creative Studies. What led you to attend that school? Um, They came to, they used to come to my high school. What high school? um, Southfield Lathrop. Mm Mm-hmm. They used to come to my high school, and then I guess like my te- my art teacher at the time, Ms. Mills, mm-hmm. she like kind of pushed me to do. She's like, Erin, you're like really creative. She's like, yes, you don't have like the super because like I was creative, but I didn't draw as well as like some other people in the class who had like super great technical skills. She's like, but you will succeed. It's fine. They're creative there. And then I was like, okay, I'll check it out. But then I also like looked at going to the art institute and i did like a summer a week summer course with them because Mm -hmm. i wasn't going to go into graphic design i was going to go into interior design 
at first. Mm -hmm. And then I did that week class or that week course uh, with them. And I was like, this is definitely not what I want to do because like, I think I was thinking more of interior designing, like interior decorating. You were thinking HGTV. I was thinking HGTV and they were like, no, no, no boo. You got to plan out how many plugs go in this room, mm -hmm. how many light sources, where are the window plays. I was like, oh, this is, this is not what I want to do. I yeah. just want to make areas look pretty. Mm -hmm. And this is too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when I went to CCS, I was like, okay, I'm going to graphic design because it was someone at my church. His name is Indy BC. He does a lot of murals around Detroit right now. And he was doing graphic design. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. What school do you go to? And then like start talking to him. And I was like, okay, I'm going in for graphic design. Going for graphic design. And then I'm talking to the department head. And he's, he seems cool. But then the advertising department head, he grabbed my attention instantly. And I liked his energy. And I'm an energy-driven person. I was like, he seems bubbly and fun. He's like, why go to graphic design? You're going to be working at an ad agency anyway. You might as well be the art director and tell people like mm -hmm. what goes where and how to execute your idea this way you can be like almost a jack of all trades because you know the different languages to talk to the illustrator that's working on the storyboards the production team that's doing like mm -hmm. the whole photoshop and video editing <laughs> so i was like that sounds a lot better than me doing all the production <laughs> so and w with that ccs we're going to talk a little Lawrence Tech, too. Mm -hmm. Like, both very... Um, Focus. Very... Um, definitely niche schools in the Metro Detroit area uh, have provided a lot of opportunities for many people. But in the, in the classic narrative of most things in America, definitely designed and driven for a white male to flourish. Yes. Uh, and yes, black <laughs> women, you know. Being black at CCS, uh, being a woman at CCS, so it, it's a different feel. Now mm -hmm. there are some there are some legends that have walked those halls uh, at CCS. Like one of my favorite of homies, Jay Rainey. Um, and, but that journey becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. What was the journey at CCS like for you? And just you know being present and being so aware that like wow. You know, you may not see another black person for like two semesters. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of looked up my freshman year. Yes, it was like a very limited amount of black people. But my freshman year when I came in happened to bring in four African-American females, which I am really cool with still now. Yeah. And, and that's, that's we huge for CCS. Yes. Oh, my goodness. We instantly. And wait, wait. Time out. Just for everybody watching, <laughs> CCS is a great school, but in the heart of Detroit, that's like 85% black, that in like 2000, what what year is this? When that I came, went in? in? Yeah. Um, 2012. So in 2012, that four African-American women that are into artistry can go to a school, that just shows you what's up with America. Continue. <laughs> This is yeah, so we instantly linked up because, like, we went in, like, the freshman class. We had, like, little spats, maybe, like, two or three black people in these other focuses. But we were like, we're all in advertising. And then <laughs> me always trying to make friends, I was like, yeah, this is cool. And then start talking to each of them, seeing where they were, finding out. It was like we instantly like created this like little small group and then I knew into BC and he was going mm -hmm. there and then we started going to like the club that they had for the black artists on campus which was BART which is mm -hmm. Black Artists Research and Trends mm -hmm. and there we met his friends were a whole bunch of upper classmen black males and they were really cool and then we met a, a photographer her name is Kelsey and then like created this little small network where we all just meet in the community space at CCS and hang out and just like express like what we don't see because there were black students at CCS that did not talk to black people yeah. didn't even acknowledge us they didn't like, know they were black like, they did I, I swear <laughs> they did not <laughs> because I'd be like you know you go in and just be like hey or like mm -hmm. do like yeah. head not walking by mm -hmm. nothing <laughs> nothing and like 
I was so sad when like NDBC and like that group they kind of graduated because they were like a couple years older and then the four girls that I started with one dropped out our freshman year and then I was like oh no our group is getting smaller mm -hmm. <laughs> and then sophomore year my other friend she dropped out so now it's two of us mm -hmm. I was like okay we got to get through this we got to make it through and it was just like really like our group was dwindling because <laughs> now it's two of us trying to make it it was just it was difficult because CCS I think like those kids one we had like a whole bunch of discussions with like with the white and Asian students yeah <laughs> about <laughs> I mean and 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 very present in for for so many so mm -hmm. like those anchors on campus uh, like Gilda Snowden that has been pushing for black artistry and the heightened black artistry mm -hmm. of black women uh, that's a name that's always like hyped up uh, mm -hmm. when we think of this uh, like you know that school it, it it is providing a lot of opportunities but it can be very tough as mm -hmm. culturally just the black experience is only something that can be understood and interpreted yeah. by someone that has experienced the black experience yeah and then like I think also like with our professors they would be like wanting us to like be just super black like okay my advertising professor one of them I think it was during like one of our portfolio reviews and he was like I was expecting because you wrote this spot for it to be you know no it was okay no it was the eight one of okay one of my agent professors because <laughs> he was they were all together like we have a review in front of the department chair and like the co-chairs and then he was like I was just expecting it to be a little more you know a little more black and i was like what funny. <laughs> and like because like, like all that d ray stand up <laughs> <laughs> you like you know just like a little more you know because if you're doing this jazzy thing it should be i was like this is how we talk i'm so confused on what don't what were you expecting to come out the mouth i was, expecting your, I was expecting your comment to come with a karate chop brother <laughs> and you wanted more ebonics i that's i think I think that was the case. And I was like, but that didn't make sense for this. It didn't make sense for the spot that I created. Mm -hmm. I was like, it doesn't, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's like the weirdest thing to be told. Are you yeah, being by somebody, black enough? By in somebody this? that uh, <laughs> is not black. Yes. <laughs> like, I didn't no, think he was, he was black he was, enough. He was, he was my Asian professor. <laughs> oh, he was Asian? Yes. Yeah, that's why I said. He was Asian. They, I've had a lot of, a lot of. Like and I love issues. that professor, by the way. <laughs> other than that comment, <laughs> not even just issues. A lot of comments from because some of the coworkers that I work with at my elementary school and they're mm -hmm. Asian. They make these little slick comments too about black culture, but they are fascinated with black culture. Mm -hmm. Everybody is. Yes. Even yes. black people. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just see something black and you'd be like, "Yo, that's so black." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just I'm the way people it. talk, the way people <laughs> walk. We're the greatest the people, species ever. Yeah, it, it was. It was a kid. I took a picture of him. Uh, my friend had a backpack giveaway today, and the kids were talking about whose backpack was better. <laughs> but the way they even talked about it, mm -hmm. it's like, man, my my backpack, my backpack's so cool because it's Black Panther. Like, I'm gonna have to put it up today because, you know, people gonna be trying to steal my backpack. It's like, <laughs> nah, they gonna be trying, and it's just like, yo, yeah. man, this is like so interesting. Like, this is like, they have to be all of five years old. Like, like <laughs> their interpretation of breaking down the backpack that was given away, and it's like, and it captured, enamored, like, everything of their existence in the, the the nature of it. And I know in it they're mimicking, like, discussions and mm -hmm. conversations that they've seen over the years from other people. But it's just like, wow, this is crazy. This is going to be the same discussion that they have, you know, 30 years from now when they probably talk about some other material good. But interesting in black, black culture. Yeah. Lawrence Tech. <laughs> Same thing, a, a, a different feel, way more technical. Um, what was that like? Oh my gosh, I remember. I remember orientation vividly. I looked around and I began to try and count how many black people, including myself, 
I stopped at six. Hmm. I stopped at six six people, my incoming class, and then um, two of us, three no, three of us were females. And that's that's it. Um, it that school is odd in itself because for one, it's it's in Southfield, mm-hmm. which is dominated by black people yet there was only six black people in my class and then both of the girls that were black in my class they didn't know that they were black and that was also alarming to me part, they were a part mm-hmm. of another but see that's the other thing too because black is as much as it's a skin color it's also like culture yeah. like sometimes you'll meet a person that's white but they're culturally black it'll throw you off yeah you're like <laughs> Maybe like Tommy from Power, like what? <laughs> yeah, it'll be sort of like that. Just, I had a friend like that yeah. in middle school. And then, you, and then you yeah. meet people that are black, but they're like culturally white because they grew up wherever they grew up. And then they're like, no, bro, we're playing lacrosse, bro. And it's like, damn, you know how to play lacrosse? Right? It's odd. Um, so I had that. So, you know, the school population of Lawrence Tech, if anyone doesn't know, it's about 70% male, 30% female. Mm-hmm. So already then, like we talked about before, how like women are looked at as property. You getting pounced on like by these men because they don't see no men. And then especially from the black, the small black community at Lawrence Tech, you're a black female, a lone black female. So you got that, and then you have the the fact that that school is super expensive, like outrageously expensive, and that school on paper it looks like it tries but it really doesn't it doesn't try to help to to keep that the retain that small black community that it has uh, do you do you think that it's w- what could be done to um i guess to ease that transition for that student that's about to enroll today well they they're grabbing they're going to um to the dps schools and they're promoting their school there they want they want their numbers for for black students to go up so they're going there and this they they're coming to us because i was the vice president of three organizations there the black student alliance national society of black engineers and then um a community service Mm -hmm. organization so they would come to us asking us, okay, what can we do? And I said, well, you need to have these kids prepared because they're dropping out because they feel insufficient to be here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was, when I was there, I hosted a study night with Marissa mm-hmm. and Chris, um, our other friend, and we would be there and, you know, I'm helping out other people's homework, <laughs> doing, helping them do their homework and I'm not even getting my, own, my homework done. You know, I felt more more prepared being there, but the the caseload that they give you there is not it's not something that's healthy. Like my teacher, he told me like sleep is overrated, and I'm just like, wow. That has to be the same for CCS. Yeah. Like so many nights not sleeping, like you're not sleeping, <laughs> not <laughs> eating. Yes. Um, some people, their hygiene wasn't correct. You know, me personally, I would leave and go and take a shower and come back. Make sure. Make sure <laughs> you got in the shower. If you're 70 guy, that's almost like jail. So, yeah, yeah I can imagine like, hygiene is like, like, yeah. uh, Hi- like, people are literally and sleeping. I seen a woman today when I was truck driving. Yeah, truck drivers, hey, yeah, it's real. Like, they would <laughs> sleep in real. the studio, not go. Like, I remember one time it was, we were having um, crit and because it was our finals. And, you know, finals in the artistic world, they're not just tests. They're not tests at all. You have to make projects. Mm -hmm. You got three projects due all in the same week. (laughs) How are you sleeping? (laughs) Like, for months, you're not not doing anything but sleeping. So, like, I'm drinking, like, Red Bull, Monsters, like, constantly just to function. Like, I feel like a crackhead. You are better than me because (laughs) I just suffer because I was like, I don't like energy drinks. So I literally would just be fighting myself and then you have kids at CCS offering you Adderall and you're just like, you know, the drug consumption at Lawrence Tech was huge. (laughs) 
for one, <laughs> Lawrence Tech didn't have any options of anything to really do. Even mm-hmm. though it was so close to Detroit, we didn't have like no way to get there, so mm-hmm. we didn't have nothing to do. So then you got a large percentage of people, and I saw I saw people doing lines of Molly like right in my face, and they're off, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good on that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really good on that. But a lot of people, they did drugs when I was there to help them stay up. Mm-hmm. They would sell their own prescription drugs, like their own um, mental illness drugs, so that people can stay up for hours or days. Hmm. And it's just, it's strange to me how they're awarded for being such a great school, but the men, the the mental stability of like yeah. most of the students at like art school, like CCS or like Lawrence Tech and engineering school and architecture school, is mm-hmm. terrible. It is. Now, now this this pressure kind of comes with uh, with both with uh, as they say sometimes the burden, and mm-hmm. it's good that you're you're offering some insight to both stories and both perspectives, uh, which leads. To, to today you all are coming together to launch a real special podcast as it's so many podcasts now with Detroit is different and Detroit is different <laughs> after dark but I really just want to connect with people that are passionate about something mm-hmm. and originally I thought this would include a, another friend that I see being a guest on you guys show eventually Sydney Kemp oh yeah but now awesome. it's fitting because I I love the passion of visual artists Mm -hmm. so I'm very interested in seeing how this will come together where is the artistry from both of you all today after you've seen like such I guess strenuous efforts into Mm -hmm. creating whereas now when you all walk into creating in your own space your podcast will be about the health it'll Mm -hmm. be about the thought process It'll be about the 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 personal life, the family mm-hmm. life, like mm-hmm. the 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 what you're talking about, like the the quality of life of artists, along with being creative itself. As an artist, <clears throat> a lot of successful artists, it's a give and take. Like I'm, like you are taking every time I make a piece and you take it. Or I make a piece for the world to see. I'm giving a piece of my life or a yeah. piece of who I am to other to other people to come and comment on something that I made from like the depths of my soul. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's so important to me. And when people have their own opinions and it's ne- it may be negative, mm-hmm. it can take a little piece of that person and just destroy them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And people don't realize that we're giving a little uh, insight of our lives every time we create and that affects us daily Mm -hmm. and it can get to the point that's where a lot of a lot of artists that I've known either they deal with mental illness or they or they have in the past Mm -hmm. and it's about being aware like I saw this this status on Instagram before and it was talking about um people ask so much from artists but they never think about like what's going on with their own personal lives because they might be going through distress yeah. but you're asking so much from them and I actually uh, got a songwriter told me once the best times to write a song is when you're stressed the hell out mm-hmm. or when you feel as though you are fully in new love mm-hmm. and it's yeah. way easier to get stressed out than to fall in love with you. Mm-hmm. So like just the, the hierarchy of of like this roller coaster of what you're experiencing and going through, as they say, the, the battle of the creative genius. Yeah. It's like a up and down thing. Like I feel like I've written some of my best poetry when I was in my darkest times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But with that again even when I was in my darkest time writing having this creative outlet it didn't necessarily make it any better I'm gonna have this great content right like Mm -hmm. people people like it they love it they think it's awesome but it didn't really make me feel any better it just at the moment it helped me take my mind somewhere not completely off of it because I'm writing about how Mm -hmm. I'm feeling but it was just like you know like a little cover up like just shielding me from 
you know, I don't know, making dumb decisions while I'm super upset, but I'm still going to be upset after I write it. So, so for this, Aaron, as you get into discussions like that, what is this podcast going to be for you? As you explore this, what is it going to be for you? I think this podcast would be like just another creative feel for me to pick up, honestly. Um, but it would be like more so me connecting with more creatives because I like to be like I like to use other people like almost as a muse like when I meet people and they're like so interesting I'd be like they're a muse for something like I don't know what yet but I'd be like I need to pick their brain some more I need to see like their creative process and get to know what they're doing as a person and how they're creating because I mean advertising's not like a super creative field honestly because you're doing what the client wants and how the client wants this to look and what would do well in this market. It's too many restrictions. So like being, it'll, the podcast will be putting me in more creative spaces where I can release my mind from <laughs> doing templated kind of <laughs> creations. <laughs> I think that would that'd be. <laughs> so you're telling me when we met, you were thinking what you could use me for? Girl, not hilarious. Okay, you're right. No, you're right. That's how it came out. <laughs> so let's backtrack. No, that's not what I was thinking at all, Asia. I think when yes. I met you, it like because at that time, I mean, I met you in the middle of me being at CCS. Mm-hmm. Honestly, my only focus at CCS <laughs> was to get projects done. I wasn't even like yeah. <laughs> thinking of like connecting with other creatives and just like having a release. Because, like, you would just be so, mm-hmm. that's cool. <laughs> so, with that, the audience has a feel. You all will definitely know this was a great discussion. Good energy from both of these people. Because I've been back and forth talking to Asia a little bit more and more. I got to get her a mural. I'm supposed to be a client to get a mural. They hopped on top of the mural project. But I'll be working more with Asia. Now I'll be working more with Aaron. I like both their energies. It's like, I'm like you, Aaron. I'm an energy person. Energy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the good chi. Yeah. <laughs> but we're winding down on this interview, and we're going to get the classic Detroit is different questions for you both. First, very first car, year, make, and model, and what year did you get it? Okay. I guess I'll go first. First car was in 2015. Okay. Because... My dad had a lot of broken promises to me regarding cars. Oh, so go. if he ever listens to this, <laughs> just know he ain't follow up. <laughs> um, but it's a 2008 Impala. Okay. okay. <laughs> I still have I it. Like that. I <laughs> like that eight. I like the eight body. What color? Um, It's like a slate gray, I guess. Okay. Did, what did you name it? Um, okay, his name is Ron Rico. I named Ron him. Rico. I named him after Ron Rico Lee, um, the actor. <laughs> he was in uh, Sister Sister. He was mm. Tia's boyfriend, Ty- Tyrese. Oh, the fine one. Yes. So Ron Rico Lee, because I still like kind of watch his show. Was shows. that the one that? Uh, okay, okay. He wait. was the grown Bud guy. Was the okay one was like stupid and like trying to get his GD. The dark skin. That, that, that was, was him. That's, that's Ron. That's Ron okay, Rico okay. Lee, yeah. the actor. He was the guy. Yeah, yeah. He was the grown guy. He was it's so Tyrese. funny. Like on Fuse, a couple times I was <laughs> uh-huh. like watching uh, the sister sister reruns. Come on, oh, Fuse. Every uh-huh. time I had to cut my uh, cut my extended cable, but it's so funny because uh, the guy that plays. The villain Nigel and Tupac uh, in the in the Tupac All Eyes on Me movie. Mm-hmm. This is how funny life goes. I was like, damn, that looked like Nigel from the All Eyes on Me movie. I was like, that is Nigel from the All Eyes on Me movie. <laughs> I was like, damn, he married to uh, Tamara or whichever. Yeah, one of them. Tia. One of them. Yeah, yes, Tia. Tia. Yep. It was interesting. Yeah. It was a, it was like a fake gangster episode. He's also <laughs> in that LeBron James show that they had yeah. on. What was that? Showtime? Yeah. Survivor's like Remorse. Survivor's yeah. Remorse. I watched that and I was like, yes, <laughs> this is more affirmations of why my car should be Ron Rico Lee because he also had <laughs> he also had um, 
another show on BET. I think uh, it was like about marriages. I can't think mm. of it. But it was like, I, I don't know. He has an age. And I was like, I don't know. Ron Rico, Ron Rico is such a unique name. It and is. it's like spelled with R O N R E A C O, is how you spell his first name. Oh, his first name is That's, Ron Rico. His name is his first name is Ron Rico. Wow. His last name is Lee. And I was you like, know, "That's his Hollywood name." Is it? It's probably like his real I, name is like Ulysses. You know what? <laughs> Eucalyptus. This is when you just Google people. <laughs> where's the Where's the first place you went in Ron Rico? <laughs> or with Ron Rico? I don't know. First place, uh, literally the school. Okay. Um, I was working at the time working at Starbucks, and then. Going to CCS. Okay. Okay. <laughs> At Starbucks opening four thirty in the morning to mm-hmm. driving mm-hmm. downtown. How, how was uh you like your Starbucks job? <laughs> Are you mad that you didn't get a, a whole day uh a whole day paid for uh for black cultural sensitivity? Yes. <laughs> I, feel you. I was yeah. very upset because yeah, got like, I like one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh just yeah. Oh my goodness. Because I talk to you about cultural sensitivity. Yeah. I. Oh my god. Now that I think about when I was working at Starbucks, because I was working at the Tro- the Troy location, one oh. of the Troy locations, and like I say, it's multiple in Troy. I know, I know, <laughs> but like Maple and Crooks is where I worked. Oh, I I, I, <laughs> I went to Walsh. I'm very familiar with that. <laughs> and Starbucks. oh my god, those customers! I don't know. I remember one experience with one of the customers. I'm so sorry to go off on this like. <laughs> The lady, she was like, look, Aaron, I got a tan. I'm almost as dark as you. Ooh. And I was like, I'm not even that much. I'm not that dark. I'm not that dark of a person. <laughs> but, like, I just looked at her, and then I walked away because I was like, I'm not doing this today. And, like, most of the customers that I encounter, I just walk away because like, anything, I would be like, anytime I felt like my anger rise, and I'd be like, you know, they're not going to get that out of me. <laughs> and then I had this. Those Somerset crap. Yeah, and then, okay. <laughs> I think it was like the payroll, year. payroll like Somerset, so mm-hmm. you know, it's the black experience in that neighborhood. <laughs> and then I had <laughs> cash dial as well, peasy. <laughs> Why are you making that face? You, your eyes got real wide. <laughs> and then I had another experience. So I was wearing like this Black Lives Matter sticker on mm-hmm. my Starbucks uniform. Mm-hmm. And this man, he pulls up to the window. He had a big order, too. Like, mm-hmm. we just made it. I'm about to hand it to him out the window. He sees the sticker. And then, like, before he, like, fully sees the sticker, he's like, I'm sorry it took so long to come up to the window. And then his little kids in the back, they was like, hi. And then, like, he pulls off and was like, I can't buy here. And then he pulls off. And then he parks. And then he comes inside the coffee shop. And he's going off on me and yelling at me. And he's like, he he's like, you guys let her wear this Black Lives Matter stuff. What about Blue Lives? What about this? And he goes on this whole rant of how all lives matter. And then, the, like, it was just, like, funny because my manager came up. And she was like, yeah, we let her wear that. Why wouldn't we? And she was like, have you not been watching the news, sir? Or, like, watching what's going on in the world? He was like, what about those cops? And he just kept going. You and will then, not be watching the Jay-Z documentary. No. <laughs> <laughs> he won't. And it was, like, so upsetting for me that day because I'm, I, I'm not a very angry person. Like, having, like, I was like, I'm not going to yell at this man. It just upset me to the point, like, I, like, got mad and cried. <laughs> and I didn't want him to give him that. Because I was like, dang, I really wanted to go off on him. But I was like, I try to, like, keep <laughs> my composure in front of this very white crowd of people and not go off on people when they should have, I should have gone off mm-hmm. on that man. Mm-hmm. And then, because, like, I think I also cried because I was like, the innocence of those little babies that were in his backseat are now going to be affected by this man because mm-hmm. this is his view. As <laughs> they say, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Yes. So in about 30 years, <laughs> they'll be yelling at your kids yes and that's why and i think that's what more that like upset me the most because i was just like but the babies (laughs) are gonna get this oh my god they start somewhere (laughs) they do they Uh, start somewhere it's still people in the ku klux klan (laughs) they were you see them little babies in the the caves that's what that really gets me they got full stuff doing this and i'm like what doing the salute thing that last year that thing in virginia Mm, there'll mm, be more mm. of that going on. Oh yeah, it never there'll stops. Be more of that going on. As you, um. you know, so same thing for you. 
very first car, your make and model, when'd you get it? Yep, okay. So, very first car, I was, when I had to drop out of Lawrence Tech so that I could drive to a job, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a Chrysler 200, uh, okay. I think it was a 2014. Okay. Cash. The sport, <laughs> the sport model. Okay, had so you could have super cash in it. You was yeah. oh, <laughs> not out here. I he was, was. Like bird man. Yeah, it had little it had little bucket seats inside too, but that that came standard. Like I bet that you had heated seats. Oh my I did. Oh, I did have heated have seats. Heated seats and, a, went and a heated heated steering wheel. Oh too. my god! So you had leather seats in this? No, they were leatherette. <laughs> it was a leather mix with like with uh with fabric. Oh, okay. but it, it was leather. No, a leatherette is like when it's part, it's patches yeah. like parts of it. Yeah. Okay. But I love that car. Like, what? Uh, uh, what did you name it? You know, I didn't name it. My friends did from Lawrence Tech. They called it the Buttmobile <laughs> because <laughs> they called it the Buttmobile <laughs> not for not for <laughs> sexual reasons, y'all. <laughs> Asia was out here getting booty and the Buttmobile and her um, friends. And put there's her nothing there. wrong. First of all, let's let's clarify. I said there's nothing wrong with little ass in the car. Let's let's get that. <laughs> but it was called the Buttmobile. Young people, that's young people actually. Nah, if, judging from the way y'all be talking on searching for Claire, I know <laughs> that's not just young folks. <laughs> yeah, it's but we we speaking about yesteryear. <laughs> well, get, these are get these are for a good bed. <laughs> good good posturepedic. <laughs> well, we got we have young bodies now. Yeah. <laughs> we can we can endure the pain the next day of being cramped up in the car. It ain't it ain't the good pain, it's the good angles. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be creative in the little small cars. Get the, the good ticket from the long arm of the law. Talk about what you don't want to go to court for. Oh yeah, you don't want to go to court for that because you will end up on that list. That's you excellent. end up on that list, and also yeah. you'll be very embarrassed in court. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I could only imagine a flashlight aiming on my ass. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, I had that Chrysler 200. It was blue. It was called the Butt Mobile because um, it would had the knob to shift between gears, and not like the um, what is that? What do you call that? When you're shifting between gears, what's that little thing the gear called? Shift? Yeah, okay, the gear shift. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a knob, so my friends thought that was so odd. It was like it's just a butt mobile. Okay. It's booty as ass. I'm like, okay. Well, I didn't like my they liked my car, but they just continuously called it the butt mobile. Interesting. Yeah, so whoever engineered that was like yeah. trying to go beyond the yeah. realm. They didn't want to yeah. give you the gear shift. No, nah, they it was they a wanted, knob. They wanted to make it new school. Yes. Okay. Where's the very first place you went when you got the ride? The very first place I went was home. <laughs> yes, unbeknownst to me, because I got it. Um, I had to help with the payments because my my mother, when I was younger, she said that I was not allowed to have a car because I didn't have a job. So then I asked for a job. She said, "Well, your job is school." I said, "Okay." <laughs> Uh, so I helped pay it with the payments, but I was not aware of how many miles I was able to have. Mm -hmm. And this fool who got the the lease signed up for ten thousand miles a year. Mm. Who the hell can drive around a car with only ten thousand miles a year for three years? It's called it's called keeping it close to home. Well, I worked in Ann Arbor, so there was no type of keeping it close to home then. Mm. But I rode that sucker all the way, all over the place. Oh my gosh! I so went over my rode that into a new vehicle. Yes. Uh, the first I went to Muskegon. I went on that little camping trip. That was fun. Okay. Only oh, taking your car that only got thirty. I only <laughs> drove drove an eight hour trip that only had ten thousand miles. Oh, you, you, did, you did, I mean, put like a, took a month out the game. <laughs> took a whole on year off the game on one, one trip. trip. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So, but it was fun. So, um, <laughs> very next question. You are the DJ at the Detroit Fireworks at Woodward in Jefferson. Mm. You get to play three songs. The fireworks are over. What three songs are you playing, Asia? Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. Okay. So... See, I don't play like a lot of upbeat music. I play it, a lot. It's of, up to you. You're you the know, DJ. 
but the fireworks are over, so you can play oh, more yeah, chill music. Yeah, I can. Whatever you want. You want I them can. It's your, it's your, okay, it's your okay. I'm playing Maxwell something something. Okay, okay. Okay. And then in your romantic bag. Yeah, yeah. It's a real sexy uh, song. And then um, I'm also playing um, Oh, It Is Reddening. Uh, Not not sitting on the dock of the bay. What, uh, try a little tenderness or something. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. that's always my favorite. Oh, try and then a anything with Uncle Charlie. I mean, my God, uh, anything. Anything any, with any, Uncle Charlie. Going back to the Gap Band. I love Gap Band. Anything. Uh, I love Gap Uncle Band. Charlie. Yeah. We gonna go. We gonna go. Um, let's see. What would I play? I remember you gotta the, go outstanding. Yeah, I was, I was about to say because I remember the first the first time I met met you outside uh, the Foundation Hotel. We was uh, going to that taco place. Mm-hmm. Outstanding was on the car. Was in the car. Awesome. You know, I was <laughs> I was listening to you, but in my head I was singing the song. I don't blame. You. <laughs> I don't blame. You. Yeah, any blame anything you. Gap Band, Uncle Charlie. That's 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 what my lane is. Charlie, last name Wilson. Shout mm-hmm. out my man LG touring with Charlie Wilson now. Oh my god! I don't god. know why I have not gotten him back on the Detroit is different effect. That is my homie. For years he was holding down three one three, but right now he's been on the road with Charlie for like two years now. I just saw him with his anniversary pictures up. Love you, LG. And we got to get back in effect. So I have one question. Yes. So is Charlie Wilson? Touring completely with with R. Kelly, like, or is that just one stop that he had here? <laughs> because I wanted to go to that concert, and then he was like, but I'm not. I cannot. You, you yeah, R. Kelly. Yeah, I'm nah, mute R. Kelly. I no. can't get down to R. Kelly. <laughs> no, and I'm no. not listening to R. Kelly, nasty bastard. But I really wanted to go to that to that concert. I feel you. Uh, yeah, Charlie's been on the road, but not less because R. Kelly's been pulled from a lot of dates. So he's yeah, been on a lot of independent shows. Uh, Charlie, I, I know what he's doing because I follow LG on Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook. That's my homie. Yep. So they were in South Africa not too long oh, ago amazing. doing some doing some stuff. Uh, they did the uh, Cincinnati Jazz Fest, which is almost like really just like a black music fest. Yeah. That would have been two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it's like some type of cruise coming up or whatever. I need to catch up with LG. Mm-hmm. But now that I know that you are a fan, and next time he is in town without R. Kelly. I will holler at the homie LG and we will make it happen. Yes. My mama loved LG singing. So yes. we uh we keep it moving. That's my homie. That's nice. My homie. He's LG's like one of my favorite singers up. Great energy too. So same question for you. Oh my god. Aaron. Okay, so <laughs> I know I got had like plenty of time to think. Uh-huh. <laughs> but in my head it was so many songs playing <laughs> uh-huh. that I'm like really confused <laughs> which song. Oh my god, I I can't think. Really? I'm we really was listening to some good songs in the car right now. I here. know, cause I that's you I was mean, playing like some bangers. Punk. She was she was playing play N.E.R.D. I mean, come on now, I know. amazing. Like, I know. You gotta pick. It, oh it, my god, this song can change. I mean, this this is your vibe today. All right, skip it. I play Killjoy from N.E.R.D. Okay. <laughs> because I'm here for it. Because that was like the first song when she got in the car. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, like this is yeah. Um, <laughs> I think another song I would play is. Stop staring at me. <laughs> so thinking. Um, I would play. I think I would play "Hold Up," Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> okay. Because that also plays in my head a lot, or like "Rigor Mortis." Ooh. Because <laughs> that also. <laughs> but I was like, they don't. I don't think they want to listen to that. And um. When, <laughs> J Rock, because okay. that is constantly. <laughs> Anytime I get super excited, you put on win, and then you get even more excited. Okay. <laughs> it's like a very. So there we important. go. And the very <laughs> last question comes to you. If you could rename Detroit, 
uh, not rename the trade. If you could rename Woodward after one Detroiter, who would it be on? She's gonna go with Big Sean for the win. <laughs> going for the Big Sean for the win. <laughs> Who are you naming, Aaron? Oh no! Is that no, what no, no, no! I was just joking. I no, said you, she you was. Should, I was just, saying, you know, come, you think of yours, and yeah. then we will come back to me. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Big Sean actually got a couple votes already. Really? Nice. That's nice. Like me personally, I I'm trying to think of what I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Uh, ooh, Stevie Wonder. Okay, he has some votes too. Good my, brother Stevie. My grandfather used to play with Stevie Wonder. Wow, that's that dope. Is, that is. Yeah. The Black Pool of Genius. It's Donny Hathaway once said. Yes. Your turn. Oh. <laughs> and then it came back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Because I'm in the diva mode. Ooh, <laughs> nice, Diana. Yes. Because <laughs> okay. we're in the full the diva mode. Diana. You're the first person to vote her. I'm going to go with she's Diana Ross. definitely diva. Because, you know, she's Diana Ross. Yeah. <laughs> I've been feeling big hair. Yes. <laughs> And I think it'll just be perfect. You just be like I'm going down Diana Ross. <laughs> I like it. So thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't know if y'all want to shout out y'all IG or just let the people wait for the podcast to drop. Um, they can wait until the podcast drops. No, I'm definitely no. shouting myself out. You can check me out at Asia Sheree. That's A S I A period. S H A R A E on Instagram. And you'll see some yeah. cool photos <laughs> where Asia's looking smart, yes. sexy, yep. intelligent, and creative. From and Aaron. All from Aaron. Oh my. And, and, and most Asia, mostly anything Asia, you know it's the right Asia because I like most of her posts if I see it. <laughs> so Detroit is different. He said most. Likes. Yeah. Not all, most. Yep, most. Because, you know, sometimes it doesn't come through the timeline. Yeah, That's I know. why I said most. That it's little algorithm. Because, yeah, it's not because I'm hating. <laughs> Even that hateration is Mary J. No. would say. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's the, it is the system, the man. <laughs> yep. Yep. And you will find errands. Are you going to share or are you just going to hold off? Okay. Well, I mean, you can find me through Asia. <laughs> Asia's Instagram. Yes. But um, mine is Aaron Jess Alex. So E-R-I-N-J-U-S-A-L-E-X. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I post my photos and stuff. Yes. <laughs> and stuff. and yes. stuff because, like, you know, you don't post. Like your craziness, you put in the story. Oh yeah. So if yeah, you want yeah, more yeah. personality driven posts, you will have to watch. <laughs> you will have to watch like you have, you have twenty four hours to see Aaron and, and the debauchery Aaron that we got done out, doing last night. Aaron pull out the, uh, the 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 puppets of today and, and have them act out this script until okay. four in the morning. You oh guys have time to watch what we did last night. <laughs> True, they do. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Like, yeah, oh my god. I do have something. Like, okay, I do. Like, now I do still talk with stuff. That <laughs> like, Snapchat. I know this is random, but Snapchat, like, I have a, like, a rainbow sock monkey. Let's yes, do this. <laughs> this needs to be on Detroit and different content. We already have some extra content for Unicorns Are Real. We need to, yes. we need to build some characters <laughs> of, yeah. uh, please... Please, please, I'm about to be buying some stuffed animals for you guys. <laughs> we, can, uh, we can make characters of these. Oh yes, and Han God. Solo has gotten famous because I also did like a whole bunch of shorts at CCS with the Rainbow Sock oh. Monkey falling off things. Talk well, I Snapchat. This now. Snapchat. Yes. He talks on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I talk in a very soft-spoken British accent. <laughs> okay. And oh my God, he just does a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Like he goes a lot of places. Don't do that. Don't do that. I well, saw her face. Make you seem crazy. Yeah. Like I don't even know if it was crazy, but 
<laughs> what was that? Nothing. Uh-uh, you lit that to camera. Nothing. Girl. Hey, I'm sound like him. I'm Girl. all for it. I'm all for it. She's, she continuously sounds like him. She never puts the L on girl. 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 I, I'm she, with it. I'm I feel with like it. Kim needs to know this. I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> we, will, we will expand as you can see the creativity <laughs> and the giggles of some of the nervousness, the friendship, the oh laughter, the artistry. This is going to be fun. Yes. Unicorns are real. It's coming. Trey is different. <laughs> Supports this movement. AJ and Aaron, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you.